So guys, today we have a fabulous case study for you for a patient who has wrist and hand pain. There is loads of learnings to be taken from this one. So if you're ready, let's dive in. So first of all, let's see what today's patient is presenting with. So we have a 67 year old female who presents with severe pain at the base of her right thumb. And this started two weeks ago when she fell onto an outstretched hand. So walking in the street, fell over, reached out and her right hand hit the floor first. And ever since then, she's had this pain in the base of her thumb. So immediately after the fall, she went to the emergency department, she went to A&E and she had an x-ray of her wrist and hand, which showed no bony abnormalities. So as a result, she was advised try and go to physiotherapy to try and get things moving. So she presents to us today, she has no pins and needles or numbness, she has no significant past medical history, and some of her aggravating factors include lifting things up, include twisting jars, and in particular the lid of a jar off, and also weight bearing through the hand, so if she's trying to push herself up from a chair, something like that, it aggravates her symptoms. So then we assess the patient objectively. And the first thing we notice is that it's really painful to palpate in the region of the anatomical snuff box. And it's also very swollen in this area as well in the small depression on the posterior or dorsal side of the thumb. We look at her wrist active range of movement, and whilst the movement is reasonable, we can clearly see that any movement of her thumb recreates her symptoms, and it seems to be really, really painful. And the other really key thing is that she has reduced grip strength in her right hand, because whenever she tries to grip anything, she immediately gets a reproduction of this pain at the base of her thumb. So with that in mind, we've gone through the subjective and objective assessment. Are there any indications that you can think of that might lead you towards the diagnosis for this patient? What do you think is going on? OK, everyone, let's go through what happened. So this patient was suspected of having a scaphoid fracture. So Let's talk about this. So your scaphoid is one of the key bones in the first carpal row. In fact, it's the most lateral of the bones in the first carpal row. And it's really commonly injured when we fall onto an outstretched hand as a result of its positioning and as the result of the fact that it's directly under the thumb where we sometimes position our hand when we fall. Now, some of the key markers that highlighted this potential diagnosis to us were as follows. Number one, the pain and swelling in the anatomical snuff box. Whilst this isn't always the most reliable marker, when our patient does have these signs, it really raises our suspicion of a potential scaphoid injury because the anatomical snuff box directly sits on top of where the scaphoid bone is. Other considerations include the fact that her symptoms started immediately after a fall. And therefore, it's really important to consider a bony injury, especially for a patient of her age. She's also female, and we know that osteoporosis is more likely in these individuals, and fragility fractures are more common in these individuals as well. Now, the other key things to consider in terms of her objective examination, the fact that she had reduced range of movement, and the grip strength. That's often a really common one, because in order to grip, we really do place weight and load through that thumb and through the scaphoid. And the fact that this was really irritable for her might have been another key indication for a scaphoid fracture. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Hang on a minute. She had no bony abnormalities on the x-ray that she had in the emergency department. And in fact, these fractures are commonly missed or don't show on the initial x-ray. And therefore, whenever we have a patient who has a scaphoid fracture, it's really important that we always plan to bring them back, even if the first x-ray was negative. And you'll commonly find in the hospitals you might work in that even if a patient has a negative x-ray, but they have pain at the base of their thumb, they have pain in the anatomical snuffbox region, if a scaphoid fracture is suspected despite the initial x-ray, the patient should come back after seven to ten days to have another x-ray or in fact even more imaging such as an MRI scan or a CT scan to reassess to see whether or not there's a scaphoid fracture. So here's a couple of statistics that really backs up this argument 
Shetty et al. first of all in 2011 reported that 16% of scaphoid fractures are not visible on x-rays at all. And therefore, we've had Jane et al. from 2018 highlighting that ultrasound scan and MRI are more accurate than x-ray. So why is this so important? Well, if scaphoid fractures go undiagnosed and aren't followed up correctly, the patient is at real risk of developing avascular necrosis. The scaphoid bone is a bone that commonly does lead to avascular necrosis when it's fractured, particularly for proximal and middle third scaphoid fractures. The reason being is because the blood supply to the scaphoid actually inserts into the distal end. The blood is supplied in what we call a retrograde fashion. And therefore, when there's a proximal fracture, because the blood supply comes distally, sometimes that fracture line means that the blood supply doesn't reach the proximal end and can lead to AVN in the future. So it's super important that we don't miss these injuries. And therefore, even if your patient has had an initial x-ray that shows no fracture, if you suspect it, don't be afraid to re-refer it for further investigations. So guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button and remember to subscribe to the channel for all our best updates. And if you want more from us on this topic, we've got a brilliant webinar on wrist fractures, which goes through all the key fractures around the wrist, including scaphoid fractures, of course. And you can find that on our membership site. Link is in the description below. We've also got our Instagram account, at Clinical Physio, where you can find even more resources for physiotherapists. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.